Welcome back to News Across Nigeria. For more on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com and youtube.com forward slash channelsweb. You can also log, watch us on the go on your mobile device. Just log on to m.channelstv.com or simply download the Channel TV app for Android, iOS and Windows phones from their respective stores. Now, having the Channel TV and Channels 24 app will give you access to news and updates. You also have the eyewitness feature, so you too can be a part of the news. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions to share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. The Cross River State uh, Garment Factory has received its first major contract to produce 40,000 uniforms for officers and men of the Nigeria Peace Corps after the first delivery of the consignment. The factory will be required to produce another 60,000 pieces. The Deputy National Commandant in charge of the Peace Corps Administration, Mr. Edith Epayong, and the State Governor, Professor Ben Ayade, inspected ongoing production at the facility in Calabar, the Cross River State Capital. We have taken delivery of all the products and uh, production have started. And I'm happy that they are very satisfied with the sample we have produced for them. And we've just simply know that we have over 100,000 we have heard from him that we're going to produce, starting with the first 30,000. Upon satisfaction, then they're going to expand. When we started the concept of the garment factory, it was not driven by the motivation just to do politics. But it was obvious that Crossroads they needed to reconstruct our story. A state that by its geography, by its location, it's supposed to be an industrial hub because we're directly having a coastline with the Atlantic Ocean. And so why would such a state not be into heavy industry and heavy business? And for me, it was very clear that our initial and early contact with a white man shouldn't return us to slavery and service and servant's attitude, but indeed a great opportunity to have early enlightenment and take advantage of that enlightenment to create a new industry, a new workforce, a new structure that can take crossovers completely out of what our history perceives us to be. Uh, the left hand here shows you clearly that we know what we're doing. The young cadets, when they come on board, I hope they will look as brilliant as you're looking. Yes, and I think this is a wonderful example to show that Cross River State was not just talking about garment factory. We went for the best yes. and the largest. This is the largest garment floor on planet Earth. The Enugu State Revenue Agency seems to be on a collision path with some banks following the closure of eight banks over alleged tax evasion. The state government is accusing the banks of not remitting about a billion naira meant to be taxes due to the state. Although the affected banks are yet to make a response on the allegation against them, the chairman of the state board, Mr. Emeka Odo, told journalists in Enugu that the board has obtained court orders to seal the affected companies. By this morning, sealed by the Enugu State Government for failure to remit about 1 billion naira in taxes to the coffers of the State Government. The State Government, through the Enugu State Board of Internal Revenue, on February 6th and February 16th this year, obtained expert orders from the Enugu State High Court to destroy the federal banks. The Board began the following exercise this morning. And I'm happy to report that the exercise was very, very successful. The branches of the federal banks in the state, which are now under lock and key, will remain locked until they pay to the state government the taxes they have collected on behalf of the government. With the recession biting hard on every sector of the economy, the Kwara State Governor, Abdul Fattah Ahmed, is advising Nigerians to concentrate on developing the nation rather than putting blame on the administration. Governor Ahmed was speaking when he received the new executive members of the State Chamber of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture in Inori, the Kwara State Capital. He says the rot in the system is the reason for a current economic crisis in the country, which is caused by the inability of the past governments to diversify the economy. This is time to sit down and think. We have been coming from an oil-driven economy. And the money we are earning is not going into regenerative programs. It's going into consumption. 
see how much goes into payment of subsidy for petrol and other products. So what do you think will happen? So the economy cannot be better. It's not the fault of a Buhari or a, maybe a Jonathan. It's the fault of Nigerian leadership from inception. But this is the time you have to stop at a point, think before you move. That's where we are now. It's not a time to begin to lay blames. What advantage can we take of our environment? How do we make things work? That's why we have uh, International Vocational Center in Ajashe. We must start somewhere. Somebody must start something. Somebody picks it up from tomorrow and moves on with it. That is the way to go. The Nasara State Governor, Tanko Almakura, has pledged to expand the scope of skills acquisition with the intention of curbing youth restiveness. He made the pledge while speaking at a vocational training graduation where over 300 women and youth were trained on various skills comprising knitting, sewing, tie and dye, bead making, hairdressing, to mention a few. The governor is optimistic that the move will improve the economy of the state. To expand the scope of skill acquisition across the state that is why about three years ago we procured some equipment from singapore with a view to imparting technology to our youth in certain vocations that are attractive to our youth i have said it a number without times a time without number that the kind of clamor we are doing to get the youth to go to do certain jobs is good enough but we have to get such jobs to attract them we have now gone beyond ordinary farming carpentry hairdo and what have you we have even gone to secondary skills like pop like plumbing like electrical at this time of diversification any kind of a vocation you will be able to bequeath to the youth will not only reduce restiveness but will increase prosperity and reduce poverty. Some residents of Kogi State are calling on the federal government to deploy new sets of security personnel to the state to curb kidnapping and other acts of crime. The group which decries the high rate of kidnapping and robbery on the Okene Lokoja axis of the state allege that the existing security personnel have been compromised. The group suggests the deployment of a new set of security personnel, which it says will greatly help the situation. They are the conduit pipe in terms of all police, soldiers, and state security officers, as well as paramilitary agents currently serving in Kogi Central, should be redeployed immediately and be replaced with new ones. No security agent should spend more than six months in the area to avoid being thoroughly compromised as it is being largely suspected now what we are saying is this all the cases of kidnappings in kogi central there has been none that somebody has been freed out of rescue effort of the security agencies and our people in most cases have also indicated that there are instances where it seems it seems that the law enforcement especially those serving at the lower level they are the conduit pipe in terms of negotiation with the kidnappers some of these people they have been about upward of two years in the area it's, it, it, it's as if there is an unholy alliance between the criminals and the security agents. There is an urgent need for a change of strategy. When news across Nigeria returns, we'll take a look at the grasshopper market in Meduguri, Borno State. In a moment, please stay with us.